What is going on guys? It's your boy Brendan from Modern To Me, and today we're going to be discussing a concept called auto-boxing and unboxing. I really like this concept because auto-boxing sounds a lot like Autobots from like Transformers, and I'm not, I'm not even a big Transformers fan, but I think it's pretty sweet anyways. So we're going to learn about that today. So when you think of auto-boxing and unboxing, it goes hand in hand with array lists. So let me kind of show you what I'm talking about. So let's import the array list class like we uh, did before. So remember, it's import java.util.arraylist. And now let's make an array list. And remember, I said if you want to create an array list of integers, you can't do that. That does not work. In array lists, the, the variable or the data type listed in between these angled brackets has to be a class. It can't be a primitive data type. So I said the solution to this is to type the integer class. So the integer class is really a lot like the integer variable, except that it, it's a class and it has some methods associated with it. Like obviously you can create methods for classes. So it has some additional functionality, but it, it's, it's not a primitive data type. It doesn't behave in the same way. So you can uh, create it this way. And if we just name it ints, set it equal to new array list of the type integer and close it off with parentheses here. So let's say we want to add an integer to this ints array list. So like I said before, you can always go ints, uh, ints.add, and then in here you can type the new, uh, the new keyword, and then go integer, and in here it, as a parameter you can pass in your integer kind of like you can with strings, and that's fine. And that works okay, I guess. I mean, I guess it's okay. No, I'm, ki I'm kidding, it works great, it works fine. But the easier way is to just type your integer. And this is the concept of auto-boxing and unboxing. This 7 right here obviously does not represent a class type. Class types are usually represented with a new keyword and then typing the name of the class and then having the parentheses for, to represent the constructor and all of that mumbo jumbo. But it's kind of like strings where you, when you create a string you don't always have to do new string with that and all that. It's not, it's not the exact same concept but it kind of works in the same way. You don't have to type all that you don't have to type the new keyword and then the name of the class. It works just like that. And now let me demonstrate this a little more. If I were just to create an integer uh, instance, if I was just to create a straight up integer, let's name it num, and I wanted to set this equal to an integer. Well, like I said, you don't have to do new integer or any of that. No, nope, I can just type like three. And that works perfectly fine. So now let's say I want to create an int and I name this num2, and I want, to be, I want it to be equal to num. I want to set it equal to this integer class because for some reason I want this, this integer num to be in my array list or whatever. I, I, for some reason I need this class of integer, and I want to set it equal to num. Well, I can just do that. Even though these aren't the same type, this is perfectly okay. This is actually unboxing, and this is boxing. So let me kind of explain where that term comes from. So this is called auto boxing because this primitive data type here, this three, is automatically boxed into this integer class. And then right here, this uh, right here, this integer class, remember num is an instance of integer, is unboxed into the primitive data type. So that's all it is. It's a really it's really a simple concept. It's really just a shortcut essentially. You could always use the long way. But if we were to uh, print these out, we'd see that we get three for both of these. So nothing tricky really. It's, that's really all there is to it. Nothing complicated with auto boxing and unboxing. I just want you guys to know that in case you want to create an array list of, uh, of a primitive data type. So if you are creating one for an integer, you'd use like the integer class. Or if you were using like char, you can go character. And there's tons of these. Um, I think there's one for every every data type. Don't quote me on that. But for most of them, at least there are these corresponding classes to represent primitive data types just so you can use an array list and also for the convenience of the methods also. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, next tutorial we're going to be learning a little more about shortcuts with array lists. So I'll see you guys there.